And I guess we're ready for a roll call. Sandra Stewart. Present. Joe Long. Liz Osborne. Here. Courtney Michelle. David McInerney. Present. Steve Lehner. So Tyler, what uh, do we have a quorum here? We do, we do not have a quorum for tonight, so I would uh, minutes. We'll need to wait until next, potentially the next meeting when we have a quorum to to be okay. approved. Okay. Um, we can still proceed with. We have information tonight. If if this group here would like to see information, we can proceed with information, or the board could make a motion to. Continue the meeting to a later date. What is what are your preferences, Liz and David? <clears throat> Was the there any forward. communication? Liz, go ahead. Thank you, Sandra. I should have raised my hand. Um, I'm good with going forward with information, but my recollection was there were some things that we needed to uh, to report on. So if it's important that we give a recommendation, we should probably wait. Thank you. David? I was just wondering if you had, uh, or if staff had received any communications from board members indicating that they would be late for the meeting. I got an email from Courtney. board member from Courtney Michelle saying that she wasn't feeling well and wouldn't make it tonight. I've not heard from anyone else. In reading, I had rec um, I remember it saying that Phil was asking for uh, recommendations from our plan after the greenhouse gas admission um, was presented so it could be forwarded on to the state of Colorado Transportation Department. I can kind of uh, clear that up a little bit, Commissioner or okay. uh, uh, Chair, Chair Stewart, if I may, is just to say that we're just looking for any questions that anybody might have, and it may, be, may not have to be necessarily a motion from the TAB to make those recommendations move forward. It's just, we're just looking for general comments and then there's other ways to comment as well. Okay. Yes, Liz. The question that I have then is if we go ahead and hear it tonight, um, would the other members of the board be able to give their feedback at a future date? Would we need to postpone all decision making to a future date? Or would it be good to at least have these things addressed or presented tonight so that we don't pile up things for the next time? That's a question to staff. I would say that we at least do the presentation tonight, both presentations tonight, quite frankly, and then uh, we can certainly follow up with the members who weren't present and see if they have any other comments. Once we get your comments put together, it won't be anything formal, no formal action technically. It'll just be comments from board members, and then we'll try to figure out on our staff end how to make that legal. <laughs> Make sure we're not breaking any rules here. Yes. Sandra, is a motion needed to go forward then? Tyler, do we need to have a motion to go ahead and proceed even though we don't have quorum? Um, looks like Joe, uh, Joe joined on. We have a quorum. Okay. Now. okay, great. Joe's here. Okay. All right. Well, then we will continue with our... Uh, um, approving the minutes. Do I do I have a recommendation or a motion to approve the twenty, the um, August twenty twenty one minutes, Liz? 
I move that we approve them. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? It's yes, I have a few comments. Okay, David. Uh, <clears throat> page four, paragraph five, sentence three. Uh, there's a phrase, livable quarters. That was intended to be <clears throat> livable corridors, C O R R. I D O R S. And that's a term that comes from the Envision Longmont plan. Uh, page eight, item G. There seems to be a reference to an August 30th meeting there. And I'm wondering if that refers to Boulder County's um, State Highway 119 bikeway meeting. And also, should that be under F in the meetings? I didn't quite understand that notation. I made that. I mentioned the meeting, and it was Boulder County's um, Highway 119 bikeway meeting. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then uh, finally, under item C, the heading, uh, we should probably spell information correctly. Okay, I don't have all of that down. I'm hoping Stacy does. Okay, uh, and those are my comments. Okay, so we need to, so there's a, um, there has been a motion to approve the minutes. Um, and I would say in a second with the caveat of those changes being made on the minutes that David just gave us. Can I say that, Tyler? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that works. That, that works. Okay. Um, all those in favor, raise your right hand or raise a hand. And David, I can't see you any longer, so you need yeah, to tell I, me yes. Okay. I've lost my uh, video, but uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. So it's been approved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tyler, do we have any communications from staff? There wasn't no communications from staff tonight. Okay. Do we know if we have any public invited to be heard? Do we have anyone waiting? Well, I did have an email from a gentleman who wanted to talk. I do not see that he's called in at this point. Well, if he does call in, can we come back to him or what do we do there? Um, I, I think we could take that at, at the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if he does call in, otherwise okay. we need to continue with the, with the agenda. Okay. All right. All right. Are there any action items? No action items tonight. All right, so I think we're ready for the state highway 119 bikeway greenway with Alexandria Phillips. From Boulder County. Yep. Alexandra is here to talk tonight from Boulder County about the project she's working on and Caroline Michael is city staff that's also been helping from a city perspective with some of the review of the documents. So, um, Alexandra, thanks for your time and willingness to come talk to this group. So. Take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, thanks everybody for um, agreeing to hear this on the agenda. I'm really looking forward to getting your feedback, especially on how the um, the, by the proposed bikeway will connect into Longmont. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to see if you have your hands up or whatever. Um, so please just interject. Um, with questions, and I also have time in the end for Q and A. So I'll go ahead and share my screen if this works. <laughs> we should say that the raise hand function is under reactions. 
And also that David McNary is going to lose his video when we start sharing screen. There's two things to think about. And David, you're in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you all see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Um, well, this is um, a photo or a, a photoshopped photo of um, a rendering of what the bikeway may look like. It would run from um, Boulder to Longmont or Longmont to Boulder, about nine miles, mostly in the median. Um, let's see, I will. Okay. Um, so this is just what I just said a moment ago, um, just an update. I don't think, um, as Phil said, I don't think there's any um, official motion here tonight. Um, and please interject with Q and A um, all through my presentation. We have three main staff from the Bol from Boulder County working on it. Myself, Stacy Proctor, and Tanya Lubert. And it's really great to work with Phil and Caroline over in um, Longmont. They've been really, really helpful and instructive on on how it will work on that side of it. Um, we're also working with the City of Boulder. Um, RTD, CDOT, and Commuting Solutions, and I'll talk more about how we're working with them in just a, a few minutes. Um, this is a really big project, so we've gone ahead and hired uh, consultants, engineers, engineering consultants, and also a um, place that will help us with our outreach to non-English speaking residents in Boulder County. So the reason we're working on the bikeway isn't just because it's just a great idea, but it's come out of projects from studies from studies starting way back in 2014, probably even earlier than that. But in 2014, there's the Northwest Area Mobility Study that mentioned it. The um, 119 um, PEL um, also spoke about it. That that's the um, environmental linkages study. So there's been quite a bit of work beforehand to get to the point that we're at. Um, at the bottom of the screen, it says that the construction for this bikeway will be 30 to 35 million. Uh, we don't have any funding for construction yet. The big thing is yet, we're pursuing opportunities. We are funded for the design and that's what we're working on right now. We've got the, the conceptual design that we're asking for comments on right now. And once we get those comments, we'll come out with more of a uh, tighter preliminary design. And then finally, um, the final design, which will then be what is constructed. Here's a better, a different view of the timeline. We're um, in 2021. I don't know if you can see my cursor there, but that's where we're at. And it, um, so we have quite a ways to go on the design. There's lots of details from drainage to right of way, to um, how it's gonna work around the transit hubs, all these different things to look at, at in the design. Um, but we think that this project is really important. We like to think of it as basically closing the gap between all the bike paths and trails in Boulder and bike, way and bike lanes and all the bike paths, trails and bike lanes in Longmont. There's this big gap in between, and this project would close that gap and connect our communities. Um, and the bikeway that we want to design is safe, direct, accessible, and comfortable. This isn't going to be a meandering bikeway, um, and it's going to be designed for year round use and um, comfortable use for all user types from the, what I call the fearless cyclist to the interested but concerned cyclist. So it would be comfortable for all user types. And that's where we start getting kind of into the details on how we do that. Um, a lot of bikeways are about 10 feet wide. We're gonna try to, we're designing this for the main part in tw for 12 feet wide. And then there's going to be in the high activity areas where it either connects into Longmont or around the transit hubs in Niowat or 63rd, um, even wider than that. And we're looking at and discussing different ways of essentially um, separating the bikeway using paint. And should it be cyclists in both directions on one side and walkers on the other? 
or should it be this um, casual zone as we're showing in the lower left corner where very slow cyclists and our slower cyclists and walkers would be on one side? How would that all work? What, what makes most sense to you? Um, that's one thing that we're looking for feedback on tonight. And here is the options for how it comes into Longmont. Oh, and before I go any further, Phil and Caroline, please um, interject or interrupt if I, um, if you want to explain differently than, than I am doing. Um, this is a really good opportunity for me to speak with all, all of you because I, I don't bike around Longmont as much as I would have liked. So um, right now you can see in the gray area, you'll see northbound, You'll see southbound and northbound 119. The um, red line is what we designed in the concept plan, which was designed several years ago, which is basic, a real basic first look at things. And what we have for this is an at-grade crossing at Airport Road. And um, some people are concerned about that. The reason that was proposed in the concept plan is because of all the drainage issues around that area. There is another um, proposal that we're looking at that would create a underpass going under southbound 119 um, and then a hook into the existing airport road underpass to go under airport road. It would then continue on um, and for an at-grade crossing at Fordham. The reason that's shown in the dotted lines is because that is one of the few alignments that would actually require additional right-of-way, um, buying additional right-of-way. Most of this bikeway, the reason that this bikeway is even possible to be done in this short amount of time um, and with the amount of money that we're proposing that it be, is because most of the right of way is CDOT right of way, and they're um, open and supportive of this pro this um, of this project. But if we had this at grade crossing at Fordham, we would have to look at additional right of way, and then then that would hook into the existing Longmont bike facilities um, and go under the underpass that um, is at Hover. Here's Hover right here, and then eventually to the big landmark of Oscar Blues. Everyone uses that as the landmark. Um, that's one proposal. Another one that we're looking at is at, um, if you go back to the south end and you, onto the red line, which would be in the middle of the median, and instead of an at-grade crossing, we would design a um, underpass. And the reason that this isn't the priority, the top idea for the design, even though it looks great on paper, is it's a very challenging drainage wise there. So we would have to explore that more. And that could either um, do several things, but either way it would cross um, um, Four Mile Creek here on, on a bridge and do an at grade crossing at Fordham and then either hook into the red line, as I talked about a second ago, or this yellow line, which would then go under um, northbound 119 and come to the other side of that underpass that's right next to Oscar Blues. So you'd end up on that Oscar Blues side. So those are um, what we're looking at right now for Longmont Connections. And I'll keep going with this. This is. Um, showing the bikeway this is a um i like to show this because first of all there's going to be long stretches of the bikeway as i said they're in the middle of the median that are going to be straight direct um, but then here at um Niwot road there'll be a transit center for the bus rapid transit which has is still in the, the very very preliminary process of being designed that's a cdot and rtd project that we are um, very much in collaboration and partnership with um, the blue rectangles represent where the bus rapid transit bus stop could be. And then, of course, the parking lot for that. Um, the way the bikeway would work is on this red line. You come in, there'd be an underpass at Niwot Road, and it would also be accessible to go east or west on Niwot Road and then continue. This other red line is showing that depending on space, there would be a, the bikeway would 
be on both sides of the transit center, but we're not sure if that could work, but that is one proposal. And then this is uh, 119 and IBM, and this is where things, you can really see that things are really going to be changing in um, what we've all known as the diagonal highway for so many years. The original concept plan shows the bikeway going as an underpass underneath um, the southbound 119 and then doing an at grade crossing at the um, IBM road. But the proposal with CDOT right now is to actually separate the northbound and southbound lanes. There is actually not a wide median there as there is in the rest of the corridor. And they would actually put, they would separate the road, put in a wider median, and then the bikeway could go into that wider median. And then here we are at 119 and 63rd, which is a lot like what I just talked about uh, for Nyawat Road um, with the, the transit, the BRT stops. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk more about the Boulder connections. I will say that we're looking at um, various alternatives on that end to each one has its opportunities and its challenges. So we're studying those. I'm happy to go back to those um, if you want me to, but um, I'll continue with, the, with um, this um, presentation now to keep it kind of long lot focused. Um, and about the engagement, we are really looking and striving to make it more equitable and inclusive and get more diverse voices into um, the public input I have a feeling, even though I don't know many of you on the tab, that a lot of you have been involved for a long time and know that there's some people that always come to the public meetings. And when there's a public meeting, you get five, 10 people. But now with um, virtual ways of doing it and also our extended outreach that we're hoping to reach more people, and that's really important, but also the knowledgeable voices of tab and other um, Committees are very important to this. Um, one of the things that we're doing a little bit differently is we're doing a lot of small group meetings. We're presenting to community cycles, to um, people for disabilities, various different groups. If you know a group that wants a presentation, please do let me know. We're also forming a community advisory committee. Um, we put out the call for applications for that committee. We have a hundred applications to go through to find. Um, people for eight seats. And we also are gonna have an equity advisory committee, which is based, uh, mostly for um, based on Spanish speaking um, people on that committee. Um, so the project website, you can just go to the Boulder County website and put in 119 bikeway, or you can just go to the boco.org slash SH 119. Um, on the website, you can sign up for updates and really importantly right now you can take the survey that will be up until about about um, September 27th so you have a few weeks to fill out that survey um, provide comments there's also a comment form that you can use or you can just send it directly um, to me either individually or from the tab um, whatever works for you I'm more than happy to um, discuss things in more detail as well so this slide is kind of a um, thinking, what is this going to look like in five years? Well, we've got the bikeway idea, but there's a lot more going on because there's so many projects going on with Coffin Street um, and Hover um, that you've probably heard about from Bill and Caroline. There's also going to be um, the business access transit lanes in Boulder on 28th Street, but very importantly, the um, the bus rapid transit that what they're calling the safety and mobility project, which enti which entails the bus rapid transit and other changes to the diagonal as we know it'll look really different and better and safer and more accessible for everybody. Um, and this is a little bit more um, on the CDOT project. I won't spend a lot of time on that unless you want me to go back to that, but they are looking at various, um, they're doing a traffic study 
and um, that will uh, show, give them some um, direction on how to design the road and um, what that will entail. And their timeline, they'll be coming up with uh, public comment and all that in, in a later date. But we're working very closely with this project so everything fits together so it's seamless. And we're also looking for kind of a one touch in construction. So when we go in, we're built, the ideal is to build the bikeway and the bus rapid transit and the rest of their safety and mobility uh, project in um, one, at one time. Well, each area at one time. So it's a kind of a one touch construction. Though some of, or all of this project could be done in phases. So um, I didn't hear any questions. Do you have questions, comments about anything I presented or? David does have his hand up. David. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Alexandra. That was very informative. Um, to start, I wanna go back to what you were saying about um, the NIWAT uh, intersection. Mm -hmm. and you indicated that there's an an alternative concept that would have two different uh, crossings of NIWAT Road. Is that correct? That's a possibility. Yes. So would that have two separate underpasses? Oh, um, thank you for asking that and letting me. Um, um, correct what I, I said, there would only be one underpass, but then the other connection would be for going in. Um, this would allow you to go um, eastbound and this they were to have feeding to go the westbound is probably the plan. I don't think there would be two underpasses. Thank you for letting me correct that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think that the uh, the concept design validation memo was very thorough, and uh, I appreciate that a lot of thought has gone into the design of this bunkway. Uh, it seems like the project has potential to result in significant reductions of vehicle miles traveled and greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Do we know how many cyclists travel between uh, Boulder and Longmont on the existing uh, Highway 119 shoulders on a typical weekday? Um, we do, we have some numbers, yes. Um, it's not as thorough as um, vehicle, some vehicle counts that we have, but we do have some counts, yes. From, um, CDOT counts, Boulder County counts, but only on county roads and also on Strava data. Uh, I can't tell you what that actual number is right now, but I do know that most people that ride in the corridor now would be considering themselves as the fearless cyclist who would ride anywhere, anytime. <laughs> um, and most people, the vast majority of cyclists are not in that category. So it would hopefully open it up to a lot more types of cyclists. Right, it seems like a great concept and uh, it falls into the category of if we build it, they will come. And I think this project should also be competitive uh, in seeking allocation of federal infrastructure funds. Do you agree there? And, and has the groundwork been laid for that? Um, yeah, we're pursuing anything we can. Um, the funding is actually already, uh, the funding for the design is already federal money through actually through Dr. Cog though. And we're, we're hoping it's competitive. One of the things that, um, you know, and we do have crash data that shows that this is one of the more dangerous corridors in the entire county. But luckily we don't have some of the congestion and, um, that other places have. So on a federal level, we're always hoping we're competitive and we think it's a very good project and we are keeping close tabs on any possible grants to pursue that money. Great. Uh, I have some specific comments on the plan and profile drawings. Mm. Oh, good, thank you. Are those drawings gonna be used again or 
uh, will you be moving to another design phase soon and put these uh, conceptual drawings aside? Yes, that's exactly correct. Right now, in the next couple of weeks, um, that is why we're asking for comments right now on this conceptual design and the alternatives I showed you. And after um, just about September 27th or September 30th, we'll be closing that window um, for comments so we can start designing what we'll call the preliminary design. So now is the time to get those comments to us so we can incorporate that into the preliminary design. Okay. Um, on sheet three of 18, and that's in the mm -hmm. plan and profile drawing set. Mm -hmm. There's there's a note that states in part that trees at the south side of 55th Street create site distance problems approaching from the south. Yeah. S significant tree removals are required. And my question is, was there any consideration given to requiring uh, cyclists to stop at the crossing hmm. uh, to minimize that tree removal? Um, yes, and cyclists would have to stop and, and look, but they would, because it would be designed as a crosswalk, uh, motorists would also probably have to stop depending on the, the exact design used. Um, but thank I you. noticed that sheet of the plans uh, didn't show a, a stop sign for the cyclists. It just showed an intersection symbol sign and a yield sign for the motorists on uh, 55th Street. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is that done so that this can be considered a true uh, bicycle superhighway that uh, the cyclists always have uh, priority? Yes, yeah, so a cyclist would have right away, just like in any crosswalk with cyclists or pedestrians. Um, but that's some really good comments because we would, the, the safest way to go about that is for a cyclist to yield or stop before crossing. Um, so that's a very um, interesting comment for how to design the safest crossings there. Yeah, it, it occurred to me primarily because that stand of cottonwoods is probably a somewhat significant uh, habitat island as well, possibly for raptors, um, mm -hmm. other wildlife. The design actually looks at um, different wildlife species and especially threatened and endangered, but all wildlife species. And we want to keep as many trees as possible. And I think that's why that, that one is particularly flagged in the concept design, because those are trees we might have to remove. But those comments, um, I recorded them right now, but if you wanted to submit them to me as well, um, that's, that's some really good feedback. Okay, uh, moving on to sheet five of 18. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Um, I don't know if someone wanted to bring up what um, the concept design that is in the packet and I can unshare my screen or you just wanted to go through your comments. Um, Alexandra to chime in, I can definitely share my screen. Mm -hmm. I have the design validation pulled up, so. Or well, it looks like some Okay, I think did yeah, I unshare? There's note number two that talks about a future connection to Spine Road. Is that a future bikeway connection? I wasn't clear what that note referred to. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, so I have, I'll have to get back to you on that. Let me see. Now I'm I'm bringing up. I can see you, Caroline. It's at the lower left of the plan part of the drawing. And there's uh -huh. a re reference to the best approach to Spine Road is from a particular direction. Um, I need to get back to you on that, but did you have a comment on that or? I just wondered if it was a, a, a reference to a bikeway connection to the State Highway 119 bikeway. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Thank you for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, because I didn't I didn't see any underpasses or other design features that would be associated with that kind of connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know you said that um, these drawings won't be used too much in the future, but on sheet eight of eighteen and sheet nine of eighteen, you might want to correct the references to SH forty two that are in the red box comments. It's actually State Highway 52 that oh. crosses there near IBM. Oh, good catch. You are quite the eagle eyed editor. Thank you. I'll pass that on. And let's see. And on that sheet nine of 18, the, the bikeway is shown in two different places, but you, you did mentioned that the preferred concept at the present time is to keep it in the highway 119 median yes and that would be because they would actually create a larger median there with the safety and mobility project that cdot's working on correct okay great thank you those are my comments and questions thank you i wish you were my editor <laughs> Does anyone else have comments? Well, I have some. Um, first of all, thank you um, very much for coming. Um, this was a really good presentation. I was sorry that I was out of town on the 30th of August and I wasn't able to hear the original presentation. But I appreciate that State Highway Bikeway supports six out of the seven indicators for I envision Longmont, so I, th I think that's important for us as uh, the city of Longmont. I am cons I am one of those persons that rides, but I'm not diehard. So um, uh, this this uh, bikeway would be for me to ride. Uh, I wouldn't be riding on Highway 119 on the the side. So um, trying to answer your question of being wide enough, do we want pedestrians on one side and a line down and the bikers on the other side? Mm -hmm. I, as a walker, um, lots of time do not hear people coming behind me on their bikes. I, as a biker, come behind somebody walking and say, I'm on your left or whatever. And so um, I think it's important that we would take into consideration that perhaps we could have a number of um, walkers on that path as well as bikers. So it might be good to have them off to one side, but that's just a comment on my, my point of view. Um, I am also concerned about the intersection at Airport Road and 119 because we have that continuous lane um, off Airport Road and you don't ever merge. I mean, you merge into the highway, but you never slow down. And it runs mm -hmm. right over the bikeway. And I'm just thinking that that's kind of set up for an accident. Um, I see how you want to go back under and connect to Fordham or whatever. I mean, I'm not really able to visualize how it's going to be safe there to get on um, the bikeway to go to Boulder through your design and stuff. From Airport Road or? Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I, because Fordham, I understand if you would, you know, if you ended up doing uh, what you had talked about, um, uh, providing uh, an underground um, connection trail under 119 or mm -hmm. under Airport Road. But I wouldn't go back that way. I. I would be coming down Airport Road to get on to um, the bikeway. So I'm just concerned about that intersection there trying to get on the bikeway. Uh -huh. I know it's at ground level if I was going to do the Lodo route. But again, that's that's too dangerous for me to get out on 119 on my bike, even though there is a light there and a pedestrian marking. It makes me think I have to cross in front of my cars and then go on the walkway, um, which is north of where I would actually be. I'm hoping I'm using the right direction, but yeah, to the left. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So, so it's, it's just scary for people that like to cycle, but 
we're not diehards on it. And that's a scary intersection. Thanks for bringing that back up, Carolyn. So if you're coming on, if you're biking on airport road and you wanted right. to access the bikeway to let's say go to Boulder, right yeah. now um, it would be to, you would be able to merge onto the, um, the bikeway um, in the blue line and then use the underpass. And then if you're, um, so that was, that, but to go to from airport road to um, Longmont, yes, you would have to cross um, right. Well, you would, you would actually have to go down into the existing right. underpass. Right. Right. So you wouldn't have to cross traffic. Okay. You get on there and you go down under. Okay. But I wouldn't want to do that. I, I, I would be going south. Okay. But that's only if we do the blue alternative. And it sounds right. like maybe that is your preference because the at grade crossing. So that's, that's a good comment to submit. Yeah. The at, the at grade crossing is scary for me. Um, you are not the only one who said that. And the only reason that is being proposed is, is because of the major drainage issues, which we hope we can figure out to a way to work around at that okay. location. But yes, so thank you. And I really, I hope you do submit those comments. Mm -hmm. And I also have okay. it down here. Yeah. Sandy, thank to you. answer your other question was, if you're going southbound airport to westbound 119, you would use the traffic signal that's there to go uh -huh. across 119 and then get back, get onto the, the bikeway in the median to, to head to Boulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that wouldn't be, and you're saying that that's, that would not work for you. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, I'd have, I, here I am, I'd have to go across I'd, the traffic. I'd, I'd press the button and I'd have to go in front of the cars and then cross, press the button again and cross the street to to hit the bikeway. I mean, I can do it. I mean, I could do it, but I, I just thought it would be easier if I was able to just go straight across. And anyway, I, yeah. I'm just ma making those comments. I'm a visual learner, so if I'm not seeing it, I don't always understand what's happening. But I understand your comments and that's, that's a good point. And I'll look into that in more detail of, um, how to get from airport road onto the bike lane actually in either direction. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And one more thing, I do appreciate that you are making the pass the 12 feet wide, but I think it's great that at the transit stops where other people are getting on and off buses or whatever, or maybe joining the, the pathway, that they are going to be wider, 14 to 16 feet. I think that's a great idea. Thank and you. thank you for the underpass on Niwatwa Road, because that would be another thing that would just, I'd drive, I'd go to Niwat and then that'd be it. I wouldn't go any further. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Let me ask you one quick question, Sandra. How far yes. do you think you would walk on the bikeway? Because that is another thing that we're getting questions on. Um, this is for everybody, not just for cyclists. Do you think you would walk? How many? How would you would would you walk to Niwot or? Oh, easily walk to Niwot. I do a lot of hiking, and I, I I go five, seven, nine miles hiking, easily. Okay. So chances are I would not hike to Boulder. But I, I would ride to Boulder. Okay. Alexandra, could I add to that answer from Sandra? This is Liz Osborne. Yes, please. When I was um, practicing social security disability and working with mentally ill people, a lot of my clients walked back and forth between Longmont and Boulder because at the time there were more services um, available in Boulder, and I think that I, I think it's great that we have have this idea of a safer way to get there. I think they'd be do, using it to walk a lot. I do think so. Okay. Good to know. And particularly since it's going to be cleared path, uh, that that makes a big difference. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. This is David. Um, Sandra, have you ever walked to Niwot on the Lobo path? I have taken other ways to walk to Niwot. No, I haven't walked on the Lobo path. Okay. I've been on part of the Lobo path, 
to mm -hmm. NIWAT, but not the entire way. I was just wondering whether you would prefer to walk along the median of uh, 119 or take those other existing trails and paths to NIWAT. What's more appealing to you as a pedestrian and a hiker? Safety is the number one concern, and I don't want to be um, up against cars. I don't like, that's why when I walk in the city, I'm always on a path. I'm never in the street because I see too many people not paying attention to stopping signs. Um, they don't pay attention that there's there's anybody there. <laughs> and so, um, visibly, I'd probably prefer being in the countryside and not have any cars around me, but um, I don't know. I'll have to give some thought to it. Thank you. Are there any other questions for our guests this evening, for Alexandria? Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. That was thank great. You, yes, um, thank you, Alexandra. Um, also, uh, Alexandra, but um, I wanted to kind of put in a word. So there is a public meeting on um, August 30th. And um, I remember at that meeting, do we have access to the comments that were made there yet, Alexandra? Um, yes, are you talking about okay. the one? Like the public comments. Yeah. Okay. Because there was a lot of them yeah. just about similar issues. Uh, 119 and airport definitely came up. There is some discussion about these alignments. Um, I remember mostly being about sort of the red and the gold alignments here. Um, I don't remember as much about the blue um, alignment mm -hmm. on the north side there. And there was uh, also. Yeah, there was also um, a lot of the same issues brought up, like not wanting to be too close to cars. Um, noise was a significant concern as well. So, yes, I can send you those public comments and. Uh, okay. We're working through addressing the ones that we didn't answer during the actual meeting. Um, mm -hmm. And there were also questions um, directly about Longmont, how it connects into Longmont. I forwarded those to Phil. I think I had included you as well. Okay. I'll double check that. You did. I think we provided the answers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's all about like the best where you want to connect into. And this, I'll, I'll leave the tab with this thinking is where you want to be when you connect into Longmont or as you're leaving Longmont, what is the best place to be? Is it what side of the underpass, what side of Oscar Blues or how, how that would work connecting into Longmont? Um, so um, that, that would be great to get your thoughts on that. But um, thank you, and I won't take up any more of your meeting time. But um, and please do contact me with um, more comments. Thank you. Okay, so um, Phil, are you going to talk to us about greenhouse gas? Okay. I'd love to talk to you about greenhouse gas. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're ready. It's, it's a very exciting topic, and uh, and just to follow on Alexandra's uh, great presentation with lots of fun graphics and beautiful maps and uh, different photos. This is not going to have any of those, so just just be forewarned. Um, this is a pretty dry presentation at this point, but um, we're hoping it gets a little a little bit more exciting. And again, we're just here to really. Make sure you know that this is happening and that there's a rule making effort out there for some pretty, pretty significant changes to. Um, CDOT's ruling on, uh, on how they, or the Colorado state ruling on how they kind of define greenhouse gases and how they define how they're, um. Emitted and by whom, so, um, just to be really clear, we want to make sure that you know that uh, this is out there and give you some. Very small sliver of information. 
uh, of what's going on. You see, I've, I've got about nine slides here that's trying to cover a immense topic. And uh, luckily we have council member uh, Joan Peck, who's also been very tied into this topic. And we'll hopefully fill in any of the gaps that I leave uh, with this with this effort. So I uh, just wanted to go over this really quickly with you and, and kind of talk about what's what's happening. Hopefully everybody can see the screen OK and you see the GHG budgets background slide. OK, um, great. So in 2019, there was a house bill that was passed that really talked about uh, some reductions for all greenhouse gases throughout the state in all different categories. And so it had different reduction goals of, of those greenhouse gases, uh, 2025, 2030, 2050, but that was for every sector of the economy. And at the time, and it doesn't seem that long ago, right? Two years ago, at the time, the, uh, the most significant sector that was producing greenhouse gases was the energy sector. That has since changed. And so the new, new data out says that transportation with all the great, great things that the energy sector has done with their, with their you know, different uh, impacts on uh, renewable energy sources, the different equipment that they're putting on their uh, facilities today, they've really done a great job of as far as reducing a lot of the impact that they're having. And so now transportation is the number one uh, emitter of greenhouse gases in the state of Colorado and I believe in the, in the United States. So uh, now we're starting to target specifically transportation and what we're going to do about it because it's a, it's really tough to put different scrubbers on vehicles, right? I mean, we're talking about mobile sources of, of pollution versus stationary sources of pollution. And so uh, when we're talking about cars moving around and vehicle miles of travel, a million metric tons of reduction, which is the MMT, uh, it gets a little bit tricky. And this is a really, again, a very imposing subject and it's very com complicated, but we'll try to get through it here and look at 2025 as reducing 25% of those uh, GHG reduction targets in, in each sector, but mostly for transportation. This is really key on transportation. 2030 to do a 40% reduction and by 2050, a 99% reduction. And, and a lot of that is contingent on moving toward electric vehicles. And so that's really what a lot of folks are looking for to kind of help us through the, a lot of this effort, but there's other things that obviously have to have to happen. Electric vehicles aren't the the full and complete answer to getting to these reduction levels. So, uh, just this year in 2021, Senate Bill 260 passed. It was a huge it was a huge boon for transportation funding. Uh, it had a lot of different things in there about how to get money to different sectors of transportation and different components of transportation. But it also created a new requirement for CDOT and the metropolitan planning organizations, the MPOs, to really measure and account for that G, uh, greenhouse gas or GHG reduction or emissions. So that new law that was passed uh, just this year has to do a lot or does a lot to uh, kind of formalize what's going on out there. Uh, just to give you a quick heads up of what the schedule is like, and this is also included in your packet, I hope you were able to find it okay. Uh, I did steal a lot from our neighbors to the north, the North Front Range Metropolitan Planning Organization had a great slideshow that uh, most all of this comes from, quite frankly, and uh, it's been very helpful to even help me better understand what's going on. But as you'll see that in July, uh, the rulemaking was authorized. The notice was sent out in August. Now we have a 60 day written period, comment period uh, until October 15th. So that's what we're trying to really get to is Get you guys thinking about it. Uh, you can submit your own comments. You can certainly submit com comments back to us. We'd love to hear what your what your thoughts are about this rule and just try to figure those things out. We've got eight rulemaking hearings, and I'll go through two of them that impact uh, kind of our area the most uh, later on in the slideshow. In November, the Transportation Commission, which is really kind of CDOT's ruling body uh, of, of appointed officials from around the state will uh, consider the proposed rule for adoption on that day. Uh, if they do adopt it without um, other issues, that rule will become effective in January. Uh, and then we really kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this whole thing, uh, where we talk about um, that proposed deadline to establish a mitigation, mit mitigation measures, and I'll talk more about those later. And the idea that the rule really starts to uh, Kind of go into effect later in 2022, 
and you have to have a plan in place based on certain things by October 1st of 2022. So there's a lot of things that are pushing us to comply with this. And so we need to make sure we're on top of it. And we understand these rules. Most of the revisions are, um, there's a couple different areas to look at if you're gonna look at the specific rule. And I don't think I included a, a specific link here, but I think in my, in the attachments in the TAB Council com, we did, or the TAB com, we did include that. And I will send that again, just to, so you have all the rules if you wanna go over them. The things to really look at are those section one, the definitions, um, the section 4.06, uh, to talk about how the the GHG impact and, and the ten year plan are kind of identified and looked at in this plan in this rule, and then section 6.01, that amendment process for the ten year plan. So what that looks like, but really the meat of this whole document is in section eight, those GHG emission requirements. So I'm going to focus on uh, two of them because they're really uh, impactful to the city of Longmont, I believe. The first one is section 8.02, and this is really where the where we have to have that transportation report uh, done in by 2022, and it must demonstrate that those GHD reduction levels are met for each of those compliance years, and that's done through modeling. So we have some questions about that right up front about the level of modeling that a statewide model can do to be, to be able to pre predict uh, the level of GHG gases for the whole state. But that needs to be done for 2025, 2030, 2040, and 2050. So um, uh, if you can demonstrate that you're doing enough to reduce those levels for each of those years, uh, nothing more happens. You're, you're kind of good to go. But if you're not meeting those based on the modeling done for those years, and we're not meeting those, and Dr. Cog is a really good candidate for not meeting those because we have a lot of uh, capacity improvement projects on roadways, that are still scheduled in the Denver Regional Council of Governments, Dr. Cog's uh, regional transportation plan currently. So if we can't do it, then we have to use what are called TIP funds or our federal funds that are for transportation, transportation improvement program funds on projects that only reduce GHG emissions. So you couldn't spend those federal dollars on projects that would increase roadway or widen roadways. You'd have to use them on things that are more attuned to reducing basically vehicle miles of travel for cars. Um, and that means uh, reducing those GHG re emissions as well. Another instrument that's being used to kind of uh, keep these different regions uh, from going over the GHG emissions standards are the um, taking money from the 10 year plan that CDOT has and only expend those on projects that reduce GHG within again, within the Denver Regional Council of Governments, if that's going to be, if we if we can't meet our anticipated levels, then that's where those those dollars would come from. And then they'd only go for greenhouse gas emission projects that, you know, that actually reduce those, sorry, that reduce the GHG. And so, um, again, there's going to be some other, probably, um, some other uh, reduction pieces, or sorry, there's going to be some other places around the state besides Dr. Cog that may not meet these levels, but I'm just pointing out our, our, our level just to, be, just to be clear. And then Ben kind of pointed out something that we have talking about the mitigation measures, and he asked about transportation demand management, and that is one of the mitigation measures. So I have them listed here, and this is really located in that section 8.03, which is the next one. So uh, those things that we would look at to mitigate uh, and offset some of those GHG uh, measures would be new transit resources, bicycle pedestrian access that gets improved, encourage lo local adoption. And this is where it gets very localized, where we really are impacted as a city. Encourage local adoption of more effective forms of vertical development and zoning plans that integrate mixed use. So this is really critical. You know, this is really talking specifically to the communities in the Denver Regional Council of Governments or the North Front Range or the Pikes Peak um, area. Uh, places where they can start looking at asking their individual cities to start to look at these zoning uh, laws that they have, that we each one of us has as a specific jurisdiction and asking us to make changes to those. Uh, they get down to improve safety and efficiency at crosswalks for all users. So that's down to a pretty micro level of 
of, uh, of requests. Adopting, uh, adopting those local driven changes to parking policies. So again, managing parking, which I know is also one of Ben's favorite uh, topics. So, um, but parking policies are a big issue as well. You know, create, making, um, making it cost a little more, bit more or putting some kind of restriction on parking. So people are, are encouraged to move to different uh, types of trips other than driving. Um, electric charging and hydrogen refueling infrastructure. So that's pretty cool, pretty critical for the medium and heavy duty, heavy duty of vehicles. What's not on here is, you know, our garbage trucks, our trash trucks that ride around the city. Um, half of them today and, and all of them by the end of the year, I believe, or by the beginning of next year, we'll have, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll have renewable natural gas abilities. So they'll all be fueled by renewable natural gas, which is basically biofuel from our from our wastewater treatment plant. So we're basically taking the methane that we all produce as humans um, at the wastewater treatment plant or at the sewer plant, and we convert that into uh, that methane into a usable um, biogas or renewable natural gas, which is then burned in those vehicles and used uh, to, to fuel those vehicles. And that's, that's a, we consider it a zero emission vehicle. Uh, unfortunately, the federal government does not. Um, they still look at it as a natural gas, but um, many people f consider it to be less than zero, you know, even better than zero because you're taking something that was going to be burned into the atmosphere anyway, and you're using it for um, actual, uh, you know, creation of energy and, and, uh, and, and some form of transportation. And then we have new policies for clean construction. So this is really about when you're constructing things, lower emission materials, recycling of materials, et cetera lower truck emissions as well. And then as Ben mentioned earlier, the transportation demand management practices to reduce VMT. So that's you know, really making sure like the city of Longmont gives it an, um, a free bus pass for everybody who works for the city. Um, those types of programs can be, can be implemented as well. So um, there's many more things that kind of run under transportation demand management. Um, so you know, we'll look at those as well, but we're doing a lot of these things is the good news. So upcoming rulemaking hearings for you to uh, either participate if you'd like to. And there's two that really affect uh, Denver, but there's you can go to any one of those that was listed in the in the attachment. I think there's uh, um, nine or so of those meetings, but the ones that are critical for Denver and uh, really affect our area, the two closest ones I should say are September 23rd, the Denver uh, one, and the M Monday, September 27th, the Littleton one. But we're going to tell you later that on Monday, September 27th, we're also planning to have a Kaufman Street um, uh, open house, in-person open house, masked, of course, inside um, and some outside. But we want to do that from four to six, so we'd really appreciate your attendance there instead of this on that for that specific one. But um, if you can make it, that's great. And then I can resend this link as well to, to register uh, if you'd want to be part of those meetings. But really today we're asking, does the TAB have any questions or comments they would like CDOT to address during the rulemaking process? So kind of seeing just a very small tip of the iceberg piece of this, we want to find out if, if uh, you have any questions or comments that you'd want to share with us at this time and we can share with CDOT or do you want to, now that you do have a quorum, if you want to come together as a TAB and make a, you know, a motion uh, for certain questions after you kind of talk about them a little bit, but uh, uh, it's it's really up to you how you want to address this, and so I just wanted to make sure that uh, we got that information in your hands and let you knew kind of what was going on. Since this is very much about transportation, usually we kind of think about air quality as maybe you know um, uh, you know fires from California and different things like that, but this is really about what's happening in the in Colorado with our ozone creation and our greenhouse gas creation, and we are really in a place of. Uh, uh, of non-attainment right now with that, and so uh, those are the those are the things we're asking for. And this council may do their own thing, so this may be something that you want to recommend to council and help uh, uh, council member Peck uh, kind of talk to her fellow council members about. So you may want to make a recommendation to council, but we would do we did just really count this in as a as an info item and not as an action item. So it's again, it's up to you as a TAB. And with that, I'll stop talking. Okay, David has his hand up. Yes, uh, thanks for the presentation, Phil. Um, 
are the greenhouse gas reduction targets for transportation based on life cycle analyses or are they based simply on what's emitted from vehicle tailpipes? I think it's a little of both, but there is a life cycle component as far as vehicles are concerned. So I do know that there's that aspect that's being considered. I don't know at what level and how the modeling is taking that into account. Okay. And does Longmont get to opt in or opt out of these rules? No, they do not. It's a, it's really the statewide rulemaking, and then um, it really comes down to how we get money from. Uh, it's actually through Dr. Cog from the federal government. Uh, you know, we we need to. We need to start looking at projects that will reduce greenhouse gases if we're going to be expecting any federal dollars to come to the city. And luckily, again, we're already doing a lot of that. I mean, I would think that the Kaufman Street project that we we uh, you know presented on last last uh, TAB uh, that's a great example of one that has a transit component, a bicycle component, and, uh, and a more accessible by uh, walking component, uh, as well as some other things that really help it go forward. So we really are doing things that. That look at those different options. Uh, we don't really go into the road widening as much as we used to, um, and, and that's basically just because of that's that's how the money's come to us. Is if we uh, do something to reduce VMT vehicle miles traveled. Right. I, I recall discussing some of those um, transportation projects on the capital improvements program yep. at yes. our August uh, tab meeting. So I, I'm wondering how these. Uh, Greenhouse gas rules are going to affect Longmont's capital improvements program. Can you envision a future when Longmont will be seeking uh, state and federal and Dr. Cog funds to uh, pay for projects that reduce greenhouse gases? And at the same time, be using uh, street fund tax revenues for projects that actually increase greenhouse gas emissions. That is that is a possibility um, that could that could happen. We do have our own roadmap, quite frankly, for the city of Longmont. Uh, I believe you this was pre a number of you folks being on TAB, so I apologize for that, but we did bring a roadmap through that was very Longmont specific. And so we do have greenhouse gas reduction goals and targets for the city that we need to meet as a city uh, based on our current uh, policies. So it's kind of a complicated answer, I apologize, but um, it, it's it's going to be kind of important for us to keep our eye on the ball if we're going to reduce greenhouse gases at a local level and then at a regional level and at a statewide level. So all of them have to play kind of together to make it work. But yeah, that's not to I say we won't have a capacity project that you know, maybe, maybe we have a, you know, we have a, a bottleneck at this at some point. We actually went for a project. I'm sorry to go on a little bit too much about this, but we went for a project at uh, 119 and Hover that was considered a capacity improvement project. We went for build grant dollars for it, but really, what it does more than anything else is that it's a safety project and it would reduce a lot of crashes, and so that offset. Kind of those those greenhouse gas or that VMT, that slight increase in VMT was offset by the number of crash reductions. Getting uh, we got buses on their own on their own uh, lane and and in their own uh, light or traffic signal. So there was a lot of positives. There's also an underpass for bicycles. So there's a lot of positives, but uh, it was one of those projects. that's like where does it fit? <laughs> Okay, yeah, those are some of the, I guess, uh, contradictions and uh, competing priorities that council might want to consider related to this issue. And, and finally, um, your presentation sure had a lot of acronyms, and two of them still <laughs> have me stumped. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the, the first one is CMAQ. Yeah, I try to remove that as many times as possible because that's a congestion mitigation and air quality. And I think that was in the hopefully that was only in the attachment. And so I try to remove that from my presentation because I did realize how confusing those acronyms are. 
Is that a funding uh, source? That's, that's a specific. That's a specific federal funding uh, category. But I just I just put it into that transportation improvement program funding level, so you didn't have to think too much about which pot that came out of. Okay, and how about STDG? Yeah. Um, I might need some help with that one. I I used to. I used to know what that meant, but uh, I'd have to look it up again. But that's the same. That's a similar, you know, pot of money, that uh, that is very specific. And I again tried to roll that in. That's federal dollars. Okay. Oh, here's Tyler. Good. Thank you, Tyler. Surface, surface transportation block grant. And okay. And it's federal dollars okay. from FHWA. Very good. Right, so Thank this you. is just another um, just another pot of money that we go after for uh, from the federal government. Okay, thanks. Uh, that's it for me. Thank, Thank you, you David. Joan, Councilman, Councilwoman Joan Peck. <laughs> Very good, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to comment, Phil, your uh, presentation, which was much better than the Dr. Cog presentation that we got in the work session, um, because I was frustrated with that presentation because they didn't seem to want to think beyond charging stations uh, and that for me is a down has a downside with the lithium batteries in the future seems like i i, I want everything to start tomorrow and um, i feel like the 2050 timeline is is way too long to meet some of these goals um, but and also because this is my passion is uh, getting the rail to get cars off the road completely and pushing that with uh, with batteries. Um, and I do have to say that I mentioned to RTD that they should probably look at methane as a, a component for their buses because everybody has that fueling source in it, all their towns. And I think that Denver has at least four um, wastewater plants that that they could be using. Uh, I I just get frustrated that we're always going down the same exact path and not thinking of any other ways that we can do this, combining everything instead of just one solution. So I have to thank you for bringing those up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Liz. Thank you. Um, my question is, we talk about Dr. Cog, but are, how are the school districts involved? I, I think often uh, a lot of driving miles happen getting to kids to and from schools. I know that Longmont has long prided itself on walkability to schools, but people don't walk. And I think that that's probably a barrier to getting some of these miles down. Yeah, I mean, having the, having the open, um, you know, the open school policy of just, you know, being able to go to whatever school you want and not being, not being tied to maybe more of a, a, a travel shed near a, near an elementary a middle school and a high school has really affected the way that we move and move children. And in fact, our, our ride free Longmont service has become kind of a secondary school bus for many school children because they, Utilize that to get from these uh, the schools that are not in their neighborhoods to get, and those have to be the older kids, right? That has to be more of the middle school and the and the um, and and the and the high schoolers. So it's not really the elementary school. But one of the things that we're working with the uh, St. Vrain Valley School District on for this is is to talk about um, you know converting their bus fleet and how they could do that in many of these ways, whether it's electric, I mean, that is the most popular thing right now to say, well, let's convert all these fleets to electric, you know, RTD, and it's all these bigger vehicles that are kind of hard to, you know, hard to keep charged, um, but they're, they're finding different ways to make it work. But again, going back to that methane model, is there a way that we could share our resource, you know, with the St. Green Valley School District and, and be able to, for much less cost, I believe, is convert that fleet to 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 that um, to that methane piece, but uh, it's also about you know, I think Ben just wrote in the chat about safe routes to schools. I mean that's another piece of this. But again, back to your point, if you don't have a lot of kids that that are within walking distance of a school, you know, safe 
a reliable, timely walk distance to school, then that doesn't really, that's not going to really offset what we're trying to do uh, more on a citywide basis and a, a regionwide basis. So you're absolutely right. If we, if we could just um, maybe work with the school district to talk about how they have children access these schools and, and make it work a little bit better with, uh, you know, these different fuel types, if possible. Sorry, that doesn't really answer your question, but it does. It, uh, it's a partial answer. It's a great idea too, Phil. A met methane fueled school buses. That's a good one. Yeah, we're also going to work with uh, First Transit is the one who runs the buses, the local buses in the city. So we're going to we're going to reach out to them as well and just see if there's any feasibility to to converting their fleet. We also worked with uh, Via who does more of the paratransit service or the transit services to folks who uh, have some mobility issues. So they provide a door through door service. So they actually take you from your house onto the vehicle and, and they'll do, they'll, they work with people who are more, have more mobility as well, but uh, we're working with them to do a electric conversion because they have the smaller vans, which seem to make sense. So we really are working with every fleet including our own, the city of Longmont is kind of the first and foremost one fleet that we look at, and we're working on converting that as well, to 100%. Well, I appreciate that, that the Department of Transportation is taking these steps for greenhouse gas admission um, to comply with what Senate Bill 260 has asked them to do. And I look at it that it's not telling us individually that we have to do these things, but the only way that they're going to happen is if our city government and our state government makes changes, which in turn will maybe change our behavior as well. Um, the multimodal bike paths, um, other modes of transportation are all important in um, reducing the vehicle miles traveled that cars have been doing. So um, anything that we can do to help that, um, I think is important. I was concerned about projects that we've um, gotten funding for that haven't taken place, but is that, are we gonna have to resubmit things because maybe they are greenhouse gas admission uh, emitter emitters and, uh, or, or is that going to be nothing to worry about because it's already been funded? Does that make sense? Yeah, I just think that most of our um, our projects that we have out there right now that are available for federal funding uh -huh. are pretty much uh, are pretty much within that realm of uh, lowering DMT. The one exception will probably probably be State Highway 66. But we've been working on that project for over 20 years now to try to get that. That's how long that stretch between Main Street and Hover has been congested uh, to some level. And that's a great bypass for people trying to get to Boulder from the north, the north areas. So, and from the east areas, quite frankly. So um, that's when we'll have to really work to figure out how we, I mean, it's really doing some great things for bicycling and walking as well. But We'll we'll have to take another look at that if we're going to go after federal funding for that project specifically. We've got federal dollars to do design, so that's what we're doing right now. But we'll have to see what that design kind of creates for the future. But you're going to be adding that bike pass and walk pass on that part of 116. I mean Highway 16. If I remember the the visuals that we saw when when the yeah thing, Highway 66 is getting yeah. also um, yeah. one lane in each direction added. Yeah. So that's where my concern will be. Yeah. So is this going to affect staffing in Longmont by making the modeling or the changes that need to take place um, in projecting 2025, 2030, 2040, 20, all the projects that thus forward? Um, can your staff handle this? Or are we looking we, at we, you're going to need to add think, people? We think that's, we think this. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, we think the staff, we think the current staff can handle it, but what we're starting to program into, especially these fund, federal funded projects, because there's so much administration, is we're starting to program in um, labor costs 
for these construction projects because we just don't have the bandwidth whenever we take on these different projects. We just, you know, we just ask for the money to construct the project, but then there's so much more that goes beyond it. And so we need to start uh, putting that into the project budget. And so you'll probably see some pretty, you'll start seeing some larger numbers coming because we just, uh, we, we're going to need to account for that. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have um, questions of Phil? Well, thank you all. I really appreciate your time on this. Uh, again, there's many chances for you to ask questions and learn more about this. I know I just, again, just kind of gave you a very brief, brief overview. So thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. Thank you. Do does anybody do we feel that we need to make a recommendation or or do we just need to sit on it for a while need to stew on it for a bit sure it's a lot of information okay um, and the next TAB meeting is before the deadline for the right. comments. So maybe we could get you an information item that just shows what we did as staff. And then if you had any additions or anything to that, we could go over it on the uh, October 11th meeting. That would be good. If yeah, we're going to have that good, meeting, Phil. that's a question. We, we may not, we, we may have to talk about that as well. So. But we can get it to you either. We can get it to you in email as well. So that's another option. Just kind of go over. Make sure you have a full understanding of what's going on with the uh, with what staff is doing. David, were you going to ask a question? No, I was just going to agree that it's good to have another chance to uh, comment on it at our next tab meeting. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Okay, then I think um, we're ready for comments from board members. And uh, Liz, do you have any comments? I do, thanks. Um, first, thanks to Alexandra, Phil, and everybody that presented. Um, I have a comment for Phil, doesn't have to have action. And he mentioned it about the Highway 66 design. I got an earful from a citizen uh, last week and I promised her I would mention it. Um, she's elderly and hates making the left turn from from uh, Alpine onto 66 to go to Walmart, but she does very regularly. She would really like a light there, and I promised her I would say that. So I said it. Well, I think you said it in the right format. It's just the wrong person. It's uh, Tyler is listening very carefully to that conversation as well. <laughs> well, thank you, Tyler. That goes to you too. All right, Joe, do you have any comments? Sorry, I was trying um, to unmute. No, I think I said my comments earlier. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I said Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe Long. I was just slow on the uh, unmute there, Joan, forgive me. Um, I do not have any comments at this time. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, David? Nothing further for me. Okay. Um, and I, I just want to thank the staff again for all of your work. And Phil, that was a great presentation and certainly appreciated hearing from the, the um, State Highway 119 bikeway. Um, that was really, really important, very informative. And uh, it's good to see that we're working um, regionally and it's exciting to see that the bike Past could possibly be all joined together, and that's that's really exciting. So, um, anyway, uh, Council Member Peck has already spoken this evening, and so she didn't have anything else to add. So, uh, uh, information on upcoming transportation related meetings. I think Phil, you mentioned some to us uh, about the Kaufman Street, and oh, okay, Tyler. Or, yeah, I think that's all right. I think I think they most have been covered um, tomorrow. You guys got an invite as well. Spring right. Gulch um, celebration, the opening of that greenway there. And then Phil mentioned the Kaufman meeting. And if you've got anything else, Phil, feel free to chime in. But those are the two that I had. 
Well, so we're <laughs> looking forward to we're looking forward to getting as many folks as we can to our Kaufman Street open house on again September 27th. That's a Monday, 4 to 6 p.m. It's an open house, so come anytime. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with the uh, indoor environment, we are trying to do that. We're trying to keep it in person just because we feel like um, there's a lot of folks in the corridor who don't ha have access to uh, maybe computers and things like that. So we uh, we wanted to make sure we had kind of a two pronged event, one that was really this open house piece and then followed up with a virtual event. So you'll see that online if you can't make it or if you don't want to make it um, completely understand it will be followed up with a virtual uh, open house. So if you wanted to make it, where is it? That's the cool thing. That's the cool thing here is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you've ever been uh, near the Elks Club, and I'm not saying it's at the Elks, but that third and third and Kaufman, uh -huh. that southeast corner, there used to be a cool uh, kind of store that sold antiques, and now it's called the Saint the, the Saint Vrain. It's oh. an it's a event venue. A lot of weddings yeah. happen there. It's really cool. It's really it's really a, a nice place to. To do this, they volunteered their space, and that's why we're doing it on Monday, quite frankly, because they could volunteer their space on days that people weren't getting married or doing other fun things. So Monday is our fun time to to get together and do an open house. Okay, All right, thank you. Okay, um, I see that we have items for upcoming agenda. The annual city uh, Longmont crash report is for next month. Is there anything else at this point, Tyler, that you're going to be adding to that? Um, potentially, I don't have um, not on firm agenda yet. Um, I do have this. I've got a speaking engagement with um, Colorado Transportation Symposium on the 11th, so I may need to. Uh, I may be absent for the next meeting. Oh, so we'll okay. See how that works in terms of coverage and and, and how this may okay. work next month. So. Stay tuned. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Then I, I, I have the ability to adjourn this meeting if there's nothing else to be brought up, right? All right. I'm adjourning our meeting. We'll see you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>